The Mariners salvaged a game in Toronto this afternoon thanks to a brilliant start from Logan Gilbert, a big catch by Jorge Polanco, and of course, Cal Raleigh continuing to torment the Blue Jays. Now, is this win enough to stop the bleeding? We'll discuss coming up here on the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. This is Tiding Gonzalez and Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Thank you so much for making us your first listen after the Mariners 6-1 to win over the Toronto Blue Jays. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you, and if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. Big win for the Mariners this afternoon over at Rogers Center. I just got back from the ballpark, so that's why this is coming out a little bit later than usual. And uh, there are a lot of ways we could start this show. A lot of big moments and performances in this game. But uh, let's start with Logan Gilbert, because it's probably easy to overlook just how good he was today, given everything that happened after he came out of the game. No decision for him, of course. Goes seven and two-thirds innings, eight strikeouts, one walk, five hits allowed. And, of course, just the one run on that absolute bomb by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, So, Colby, I was sitting down the uh, first baseline, so obviously I didn't have a great view of Logan's start. So can you help me fill in the blanks here? Yeah, Logan was obviously very good tonight. I mean, 89 pitches and, what was it, seven and two-thirds for for Gilbert. Uh, Just the the box score scouting in this one would tell you that he threw the ball really well, gave up only five hits, walked just one eight strikeouts, all the damage coming on the solo home run on a hanging slider, uh, gave up a bit more hard contact, uh, than, uh, Castillo and, or, uh, yeah, Castillo and Kirby in the series, uh, but was significantly better, uh, at limiting the damage of that hard contact. And today he did it with the slider, which is, you know, the, the first two times out Gilbert's been featuring much more of a kind of a, you know, a kitchen sink mentality where he's been throwing all of his pitches, you know, roughly 20% of the time, four pitches at, at about 20% is what he's done the few, first two starts. Today, still mixed up a good amount, but it was 39% slider, uh, 26% four seam, uh, 19% cutter. And then the, the splitter and the curveball really take a backseat, 13% uh, splitters, 2% curveballs. Uh, so the slider was the pitch today. Makes a lot of sense against this right-handed heavy lineup. Uh, we know that the Blue Jays have pretty much always been, at least in the last four or five years, a really good fastball hitting team. So, you know, we saw Kirby, fastball. He couldn't put him away with a fastball. Castillo couldn't put him away with a fastball. So Logan's ca- kind of counterpunch to that was to pitch backwards, go slider heavy and early, and then mix in the fastball, be very selective. Uh, with when with when to use the fastball and also have pretty good command of it too, which the, his two counterparts did not. Uh, the slider today, thirty five. He threw it thirty five times. Seven called strikes on that pitch. That's a good number uh, for a slider. Sixteen swings, nine whiffs. So fifty six percent whiff rate, forty six percent called strike plus whiff. Uh, it was just a, a devastating pitch uh, today. He made them one mistake with it to. Uh, Vladdy uh, hung one. Uh, okay, that's fine. Nobody on base, right? That's the important thing there. And then the fastball, you know, he didn't get a ton of whiffs with it. 27% whiff rate on the four seamer, which isn't awful for a four seam fastball. We've seen better from Logan, but six called strikes, 39% called strike plus whiff, uh, six of those put in play. So, uh, you know, he was very selective with the fastball. He pitched uh, very, very much as he should against this team with the number of righties that they stacked in there. Slider was fantastic today. Cutter, you know, it was there to kind of firm up on the lefties and kind of get them off of the slider a little bit. Wasn't a big swing and miss pitch for him. Uh, It it was interesting for, uh, you know, this is something that we saw from George yesterday too, is neither of these two guys really threw a lot of splitters in in this start. Now, 
Gilbert threw more than Kirby did. Certainly. I think Kirby only threw two yesterday. So Gilbert threw 12 today, uh, four swings, two whiffs, no called strikes. So, uh, you know, 12, 12 splitters only got, uh, you know, he got four strikes on it on the four swings. No, none of them put in play in fair territory, but just two whiffs, 17% called strike plus with Velo was great. Command was really good, really sharp on the corners. Most of the time when he did make a mistake, he got away with it, except for again, the one to Vladdy. But this is, you know, something the Mariners desperately needed. They needed one of their three Cy Young candidates to really step up and put a stop to this. The Mariners have gotten one really good start in what has been a turn and a half through the rotation prior to today. And, and Gilbert gave them exactly what he needed. He gave them innings. He gave them a real good chance to win this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, unfortunately, because baseball is cruel, uh, the Mariners offense doesn't show up until after Logan has left the game. But uh, he was sensational today. It is his second hyper quality outing of, of the year. Uh, and the third one, he was, he was battling. He was competitive. It wasn't mm-hmm. very good, but he certainly wasn't a blow up that we've seen from the other two guys that you have come to rely sure. on. So Gilbert has been kind of the horse. He's been the steady guy uh, of your, of your big three horses, but uh, he was very good tonight and it was the slider that led the way. Yeah. Gilbert has been the most consistent starting pitcher for the Mariners so far here in the early going. Uh, nice to see, you know, this rotation actually give the team a chance to win a ball game. Uh, the offense was kind of squandering that for a while. Uh, but then, you know, like the last time they played in extra innings against the Boston Red Sox, uh, all of a sudden they just broke out. <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, as well as the, uh, the big catch that allowed them to even get to extra innings in just a moment. But first a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks. Spring training is over and baseball season is in full swing. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBI, or first inning runs, take your pick more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today. You can also get in on the basketball playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a whole new level during the postseason later this month. Download prize picks today and use the promo code locked on MLB. For a first deposit match up to $100. That's promo code locked on MLB, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners post game show. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mariners 6 1 win over the Toronto Blue Jays. Just a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube and Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So much has been made about this Mariners defense. And uh, today, though, the Mariners, at least in part, won because of their defense and specifically because of the defense of Jorge Polanco. Uh, So Andres Munoz had uh, come in relief for uh, Logan Gilbert uh, in the eighth, uh, was able to get out of that after uh, Logan put uh, a couple of runners on base. Uh, but then Munoz loaded the bases, and uh, Ernie Clement came up and got two strikes on, on Clement, but then he uh, flipped a uh, near-game-winning RBI into right field. Uh, but Jorge Polanco, really cool over-the-shoulder catch from uh, Jorge to save this game. And uh, keep the Mariners from going four and nine to start the year, which would have been saved uh, the season tie. That's right. As we know, five and eight doable four and nine. That's right. Save the season. Uh, So I do want to ask you though, um, you know, this feels like a pretty important win that felt like a very important moment that catch by Polanco that, you know, cause again, the, this is starting to snowball, right? It was really starting to feel like this thing was snowballing that, you know, you, you, you just got to assume at this point that guys are getting frustrated with how things are going, especially with, you know, some of the bad luck that this offense has been going through over the last few days with all the hard hit balls, especially on, you know, Monday night, all those hard hit balls and they barely found grass. So do you think this win is enough to stop the bleeding? Is that it, like watching how this game played out? Do you feel like this is kind of an important moment for this team with how things have gone? 
Could be. I, I, I think, you know, obviously, as the old saying goes, momentum is your next day starting pitcher. And, and you know, you got the Cubs coming into town. They're certainly talented. Looks like we're going to have to endure another Emerson Hancock start. So uh, on Saturday, uh, interestingly, I'm not going to the game on Saturday. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it could be. I, I, it does feel like, you know, the catch kind of you know, at the, at the way the Mariners are playing, even after the catch, you're like, okay, well, run around second, nobody out. Like, so uh, what's going to happen here? And then, uh, you know, our, our good friend, John Schneider brings in Tim Mesa again to flip a switch hitter yeah. uh, conceivably to keep him from pulling the ball. Right. And, and, you know, going down the line for power and, and uh, much like the last time we saw this, it uh, ooh, didn't work out for him. Uh, yeah. Cal flip Cal to his right side. Doesn't matter. Uh, he goes yard. I think that was kind of the moment because after that we saw the Mariners just really reel off some really good at bats. And, and Mesa is not a bad pitcher by any stretch. He's no, pretty but effective. he is the gift that keeps on giving. He is. He is. I mean, John Schneider is yeah. is right there to think. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I think the catch it, it's it's going to get overlooked because the offense explodes after Cal hits. You know, the go ahead turns out to be the game winning home run, and then the Mariners aren't done. They add. Uh, three more uh, after that and really just put this game away. So now the Polanco catch is going to get overlooked a little bit, but Polanco is a guy who has been just getting reamed for his defense um, at times, rightfully so at some, at times not a little bit unfairly yeah. uh, critiqued for his defense. Kind of a rough night last night. It has night. been a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. But other than that, it's been okay. He's made mm-hmm. like three really bad plays and then he's been fine. Like, but obviously when you're not great and you make three bad plays, those are the ones that people remember. So to see that ball, you know, and it was, it was set up to be so perfect, right? The Mariners yeah. get to two strikes. They get to O2. Yeah. Munoz is, he makes an action. It's actually a good pitch too. It's a good yeah. O2 pitch. It's a slider that's off the outside corner. He reaches out and flicks the bat at the ball and he hits it just perfectly. It, it, like, yeah, it, it, it was, you could see it all playing out. Just yep, of course. Well, and it, and, it, and it would have been just a perfect ending, you know. And I'm saying that sarcastically, of course. Would have been just the perfect ending to how this whole series has gone, right? With right. all the uh, the weak contact from from the Blue Jays that has just somehow, some way found grass. Whereas you know the yep. you know Julio hits 116 miles per hour off the bat and it goes right, right to 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 Kiermaier, right so by the way i've been told by some people that hitting the ball hard is actually not good like look Julio like it's hit not, the ball too hard like it's not the be it's not the be all end all of course right no. like you know yeah, and obviously a 110 mile an hour line drive or fly ball is better than 110 mile an hour ground ball right sure. yeah yeah obviously but you want to hit the ball hard right <laughs> you Let's significantly there, increase right? your chances of getting a hit by hitting the ball hard even like even hard hit balls on the ground last year i had the stat when i did the post game show on patreon i don't have it in front of me but even hard hit ground balls last year were like a 429 batting average right because you in, it, you increase the chance of well i mean because it, it just it creates a tough tougher play for the for the defender especially if they're playing in right so right like, so Again, does Julio need to lift the ball more? Yeah, he's got no home runs. Like, yeah. and we're about a tenth of the way through the season. Yeah, he's just been he hitting has, a bunch of singles. Yeah, a bunch of singles, a bunch of, you know, ground balls that have yeah. found some holes, some line drives, but no, really no damage, no doubles, no triples or anything like that. And this isn't a tangent we need to get into that much further. <laughs> right. uh, but we also have yeah. the off day tomorrow. We can get sure. into some of this sure. stuff tomorrow. Yeah, so there are definitely, you know, it was it was a tough luck series for Julio, who actually I thought played pretty well. You know, looked pretty good to play the first two games. Ooh. Today was Ooh. today was Not, bad. Today, today was a step back. Today was very bad. it was definitely yeah. a step back. You know, Polanco didn't have a great day at the plate either. Although his at bats look better and better. Uh, no, I mean, I feel, look this this team struck out fifteen times today. Like that's yeah. bad. That's really I mean, really Julio, bad. Julio and Polanco had seven of them by themselves. Yeah, uh, didn't Garver have like two more or three more? Garver had two. Yeah, yeah. France had two. Uh, Hanniger had two. Yeah. So you look at, you know, the Mariners two through six struck out, uh, let's see, eight, 11, 13 of the 15 times. So obviously we'll, we'll talk more about big picture stuff tomorrow, but I said this again on the Patreon show last night, patreon.com slash control the zone mm-hmm. uh, for two post game shows a week. 
uh, on there. Uh, or actually, I didn't say this on, on the post-game show. I might have said it, but I did tweet it. Hmm. And it's very simple. The Mariners are now 5-8 and eight because Luis Castillo, George Kirby, J.P. Crawford, Julio Rodriguez, Cal Raleigh, Mitch Garver, and Jorge Polanco have been bad. That's the whole story. Like that's the end of the discussion. They've been bad. And today they were bad. All those guys were bad today. Um, and yeah, well, you mentioned Cal in there. He was okay. Bad okay. Today. Yeah. I didn't put Cal in the tweet, but yeah, Cal. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Cal was good. <laughs> we'll get into Cal some more in, in just a little bit, but yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so those guys weren't good and they weren't good again today, but you found a way to win. Uh, and you know, it, it's, it's thanks in large part to the most unlikely of guys to make a really good defensive play to save the game for you and hand the bat and the baton, whatever you want to call it off to the offense and extra so that they can actually win this game. So baseball's funny. It's, it's very repetitive at times, but it's also very redemptive, uh, at times. And Polanco, despite the three strikeouts today saved the game with his glove, which yeah. is not something I think most of us would have even guessed was remotely on the table three day, for the last three days or so. So That's like, baseball. All, so like I was, um, I, I couldn't bear to watch in my seat. So I went up to the concourse for that ninth inning. So I'm watching from the concourse and I, I see Clement flip the ball into right field and I see Polanco going back and I'll admit, I, I started taking a couple steps towards the exit. It was a, it was a good catch. Yep. Yeah, it was a really good catch. I I yeah. I I don't get too excited at ball games, but yeah, I, that got a little pop out of me when he made that catch. That was yeah, very very impressive. Um uh, and just so huge, so important for again, for what's been going on with this team, uh the fact that they were staring a, you know, a 1 and 5 road trip in the face. Uh they were staring down, you know, 4 and 9. Um getting swept. I mean, yeah, that was going to be a long flight home <laughs> had they had they lost that game, especially in that fashion. They finally get a great start from one of their horses, and then they were going to waste it because yeah. you know Munoz had some control issues in the ninth, and then he actually got ahead, and he finally did his job, and then loop, and yeah. he lose on that. That would have been just devastating. Yeah, uh, probably also, more so for us than than the guys in the clubhouse. But I mean, yeah, that would have stung. I, I gotta know what was going through your head when Daniel Vogelback stepped into the batter's box. It's funny because I like I don't know what would have been more fitting. <laughs> Vogelback wins it, yeah, because you know the whole thing is like, oh look how good Kelnick's doing, look how good Gino's doing, right? right. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, so sure, why not? I don't know if that would be more fitting or if the ball that Clement hit actually landed, like it was actually a base hit and they lost on a on a blooper. I was like, I don't know which one would have been more fitting, but they both felt felt you know poetically. Like almost I don't, lazy writing by the sports I, writers. I don't think I would have been able to uh, emotionally recover from Daniel Vogelbeck walking off the Mariners after I mean, the last few days it, that I've had. But then again, it is Cornelius. You it is always Cor will love Cornelius. It is Cornelius, but he beat us last year too in New oh, York. For you guys who don't know, if you're if you're a first time listener. Cornelius is a name that we gave to Daniel Vogel back way back when. Well, we we didn't. We didn't Col do it. Col Colton, Colton of the from podcast. Mariner Mojo. Yes. Yeah, yeah did. He but. gave him that name. Was it 2018, 2019? Yeah, around that time. Uh, yeah. Yes, and and we actually got uh, Dave Sims to uh, call him that on on the. Uh, yep. On that, the broadcast. That was a big moment for us back then. It was, back it in was. the Soto Mojo days. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but he, now we're he, here. But yeah, he he beat us last year in New York, so I wasn't I I wasn't oh, yeah. ready to go through that <laughs> again. Wasn't okay, that against well, Munoz too? Might have been Brash. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. I try and forget most of September last year. Same, same. Yeah, I would recommend that for for, for reasons. Everyone. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk a little bit more about Cal Raleigh, who of course still owns the Toronto Blue Jays. In just a moment, but first, a reminder, this episode of the Lockdown Mariners podcast is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. 
from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into an MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Again, that is ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mariners' 6-1 to win over the Toronto Blue Jays. And that is thanks in large part to the big dumper himself, Cal Raleigh, who hit yet another home run against the Toronto Blue Jays. Yet another clutch home run against the Toronto Blue Jays in extra innings. We all remember the quote from John Schneider. That's the Hawks GM. No, no. The 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 that lesser, at his job, John Schneider. The lesser of the John Schneiders. We remember what he said though, that Cal Raleigh is not that difficult to pitch to as long as you properly execute your pitches. Mm-hmm. Uh Cal was finally asked about that comment, which was what, a year ago? Maybe a year and a half ago that Schneider mm-hmm. made those comments. Yeah. I don't remember. I think it was about a year was. ago. Was it was it was it during the series in, in Toronto last year? I think it was it might have been the one in Seattle, right before the one in Seattle, but mm. either way, it's been about a year. So this comes from Ryan Devish. Asked if he heard the comments by John Schneider last year, Raleigh said, I know a lot of guys have beef with him in the league, so his comments aren't surprising. I don't have much to say. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. If you don't want it to come back on you. Hmm. Well said. Well said, Sir Dumper. That was Cal's, I believe, 10th home run against the Toronto Blue Jays in his career. We're, we're getting to extreme levels of ownage by Cal Raleigh against the small club. Who do you think terrifies Blue Jay fans more? Carlos Santana or Cal Raleigh? Cal Raleigh. Cal Raleigh. Because Santana, as you might recall, single-handedly beat the Blue Jays twice sure. in 2022 in Seattle. It's true. Uh, and then also he had the big home run that started the comeback uh, that, you know, Cal didn't hit a home run in. Did he? No. Uh, game two? No. No. Game Cal one. Didn't. Game one, he did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was one of the many home runs that Cal has hit in Rogers Center. Um, he had another one on Monday night, mm-hmm. basically in garbage time, whatever, but Still hit it. Still owns the Blue Jays. Still set up what we were, uh, you know, in store for today. Um, right-handed Cal Raleigh too. Yeah, you know, it's not often field. we, yeah, not often that we get to see uh, right-handed Cal Raleigh go yard. So that that was mm-hmm. uh, that was nice to see as well. The best part about that home run though is that Mesa executed the pitch. Mm-hmm. It was off the outside corner. Yep. He's a little little you know belt high, but off the outside corner. Sure, Cal's a strong man. Mm-hmm. that's executing a pitch you want it off the outside corner you don't want cal to pull something not right-handed yeah so yeah, he executed it's... yeah cal so made it out i don't know maybe it's, don't know. it's almost as if cal raleigh might be pretty good at this baseball thing and maybe you shouldn't disrespect him perhaps but, yeah uh john schneider doesn't even have the respect of blue jays fans so it's cool <laughs> Yeah. Like his his opinion might... does not mean anything. Um I don't know if it came across on the on the broadcast, but he got booed several times during the series, including when he took out Jose Barrios for obvious reasons because of what happened in Minnesota last year. Uh um, sure. yeah. Jays fans that don't guy. like John Schneider. I, you know, like Cal said, apparently he has beef with a lot of guys around the league. Uh it doesn't he's... seem like many people like that guy. So he's Phil Nevin with a better roster. I don't get why they just don't make uh, Don Mattingly the uh, the manager. Mm-hmm. Like, why are they having him uh, just hold this guy's hand? Uh, when does Toronto come to Seattle? Because as we know, Seattle has in the past had a reputation of being career enders. That's true. They did it to the Blue Jays manager themselves last time. In yeah, 2020, Montoya. Was it Montoya? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so, July 5th through the 7th. Oh, yeah. He'll be fired after that series. <laughs> Take it to the bank. Yeah. So, not that yeah. we would ever root for something like that. Totally. Not whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, common Cal Raleigh W. And then, uh, like we talked about earlier, the, the offense just kind of exploded from that point forward. Uh, Ty France with the RBI double. Mitch has the, uh, the two-run single. And uh, for the first time this year, the Bears scored six runs. Yeah, just so happened yeah. that five of them came in one inning. In extras. In the 10th. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they which, all count. The two best innings offensively for the Bears this year have come in extra innings. Yep. Yay. Maybe they should play an extra innings more. <laughs> if they can get to them, fine. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, that, that would so. require them getting to that point. Sure. I mean, you won't ever see Luke Rayleigh have an opportunity to get them there, but you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Something we, we're definitely gonna we'll, talk about tomorrow. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that tomorrow. Cause uh I saw a lot of Mariners at the series. I did not see Luke Rayleigh though. Is is he okay? Has anyone Spot heard from him? Righties. Well, no, he, he is... pinch ran, including but... once when Dylan Moore was available to pinch run. Did he? I don't remember that. Uh, game two, game one, mm. game two. I do not remember that. When um, Rojas made the hit into the double play to end the game yesterday, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that was yesterday. Rayleigh was running. Mm. So that was a uh, an interesting last three days at the ballpark for me, but I, I had fun. You know, it's always nice to, to get to see the boys, and it's always nice to be at the ballpark. I'm just glad baseball's back. Being at the ballpark is always uh, really, really fun. Uh, but again, it was really nice to uh, to actually meet a listener. Uh, if that was you, let us know in the comments below. Uh, and um, got a chance to, to catch up with Gary Hill, of course, uh, which is always really nice. And uh, I think we're going to be getting uh, Gary on the show uh, sometime next week. So, uh, so yeah, so look forward to that. All right, that is going to do it for our show. Colby has now turned his room to red because uh, he, he really wants me to wrap this thing up. Uh, but before we do so, once again, a reminder that Lock launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Batnode, I'm Tide Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Ty Dane Gonzalez and Colby at CPAT11, that's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the game. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.